Leading European genetics experts have been getting to grips with the subject's ethical impact, particularly in the field of insurance. Peter Popping is a geneticist at the University of Bonn and a member of the Reference Centre for Ethics in Life Sciences. And Angus MacDonald from Heriot Watt University in Edinburgh founded the Research Centre for Genetics and Insurance in 1999. They were part of a major symposium in Strasbourg, including representatives from the insurance industry, customers and patients from the 47 member countries of the Council of Europe. So, how much access should insurance companies be allowed to this sensitive information if it could influence decisions about potential policyholders? In this edition of Agora, two experts discuss the ethical problems surrounding the rights of patients. Genetic tests might become important in the interest of prevention, for instance, in the case of inherited cancer diseases, in order to uncover people who are at a high risk to develop, let's say, breast cancer or colon cancer or cancer of the thyroid, such genetic tests might become important. The tests that for these diseases are of, of potential relevance to insurers, but only if they've already been taken for some other purpose. Uh, insurance companies would not ask someone to uh, take uh, a genetic test uh, purely for the purposes of obtaining insurance, uh, although they, they, they might be interested to know if someone has had a genetic test for, uh, some, for some other purpose. There are obviously differences between uh, the European countries. In, in Germany, for instance, we, the insurance industry uh, decided for a voluntary moratorium and this means in Germany even the results of genetic tests that have already been done are not used for uh, the purpose of uh, insurance contracts. Well, in fact, the same is true in the United Kingdom and several other countries, although there are financial limits. So in, in the United Kingdom, for example, somebody who has uh, um, taken a genetic test would not have to disclose that fact if they were seeking life insurance of up to half a million pounds or other kinds of insurance of up to 300,000 pounds. So there are quite high ceilings to be breached before an insurance company could ask about a genetic test, even, even, even one that has been, mm. been taken already. And this is a, a protective measure that has been put in place um, with, by agreement between the insurance industry and the, the government. For ah, yeah. agreement. Yeah. So in, in, in Germany we also have a voluntary agreement and the ceiling is around 250,000 euros. So it's obviously lower than the, U, than the UK. It's much lower. But the, the, only, the, the only disorders that are um, of any real interest to insurers um, at this time and for, and for some time to come are those where uh, a, a defect in a single gene is likely to lead to uh, disease or death at a very early age. Um, and these are very rare, so that's the, 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 um, the number of people affected is, is likely to be very small. Mm. If a person that has a high risk could develop, let's say, colon cancer, and if this individual, because this individual possesses the, the predisposing mutation, let us assume, and if this person undergoes regularly colonoscopic surveillance, is this taken into account uh, by the insurance? Uh, yes, it certainly can be taken into account. And there are other examples as well, uh, such as when a treatable genetic disorder uh, is, is treated. Um, an example might be uh, the, uh, breast cancer, where the presence of um, extremely high risk of contracting breast cancer at, at young ages is indicated by mutations in certain genes. The um, option of um, prophylactic surgery, so removal of the, the breasts mm -hmm. and possibly the ovaries, uh, is an option, although a, a drastic one. So this means medical progress is taken into account when the premium is calculated? Yes, it certainly can be, although mm. that, that does introduce uh, other difficult um, problems from an ethical point of view, because one would not like the question of whether or not one can obtain insurance 
to uh, influence the decision of whether to undertake a, a tr treatment as drastic as, as that example. In a small part of the Alzheimer cases, mm -hmm. you can do predictive testing. So in, in this part, uh, Alzheimer's disease follows a dominant mode of inheritance, but this applies only to one or two percent mm -hmm. of all cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, this disease cannot be predict, uh, cannot be treated. So this means uh, the genetic test can only the predict the, the the development of the disease. But we you have no possibilities to 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 treat the disease. So as a geneticist, I would uh, it, it, uh, I would um, regard it as very important that these individual individuals are counselled before they do such a test because it's a, in, in my view, it's a terrible uh, situation. The advent of molecular genetics has, has, has uh, taught us a lot more uh, specific about these diseases, but they were not discovered by, minute by molecular genetics. From an insurance point of view, in fact, um, the advent of genetic tests for these diseases has, ch has um, changed less than you might expect. The right not to know is particularly important in the context of predictive medicine for or predictive diagnosis for diseases that are untreatable. The aim of genetic counseling is to make clear to the counselee uh, that it may be a burden to know what he, what, uh, uh, the result of such a positive test. And uh, many people decide not to know uh, this uh, after genetic counseling, not to take the predictive test. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an important right of the individual to um, not to know uh, the, the, the future health of, 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 its own, of his own or her own uh, situation. I, I hope that the insurance industry would avoid any practices that might uh, lead someone into the position of knowing some, that something that they would, they, they would rather not know. I, I think um, the, the, the terms of the moratoria in, in several countries of which I am aware um, would, would avoid um, leading someone into that situation, and that is, that is, that is clearly right. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> An enjoyable conversation. Thank you.